Hello and welcome back to our combat scenario tutorial series. In previous episodes, we've set up the combat director and how we can trigger different stages inside that scenario. So now we're going to set up an example scenario using all the tools we've made and see where we can find any holes to fix. So let's jump in and take a look. So where we left off is the combat director, the way it communicates is to the level blueprint. So every level you'd work in this, you'd set up a scenario via the level using their combat stage and a switch on int and what's going to happen. So using this knowledge, what we can do is we can trigger different things to occur. So one thing I wanted to make it do is I'm going to make this door open and then if enemies come in and drop into the scene. Okay, so let's figure that out. So first up, we need a spawner on this side here. So I'm going to take this spawner I've got here. I'm just going to duplicate it with the Alt key. Turn that around. And place that there. Now we do have to make sure that it's inside of a nav mesh. Because if it's not, they won't be able to move. And it is, so that's perfectly fine. So next up, we've got this door we need to make. So obviously at the moment, this is just a placeholder block out. We actually need to make an actual asset for our door here. So I'm just going to delete that. Uh, yep, because we've got reference in the level blueprint. That's fine. And now let's go ahead and make a door. And if you want to see full details on how to make a door, go ahead and check out my door tutorial. In this case, the door is not going to be interacted with by the player, just the uh, the system, by the, the, uh, the scenario. So all I'm doing here is very simple scenario door. But you could use existing door blueprints that you may already have but I'm going to skip a few steps and just make the door just open when it gets a function call so on the event I'm going to do open door I'm going to do a timeline and call it movement and for this we need to have a asset so I'm going to go in here and add a cube obviously you can use an actual mesh and I'm just going to scale this so it's more door-like. Like that. And on the movement timeline, double-click on it, and we're going to add a track for float. And we'll give this one the name position. We're going to give it two keys. So we're going to add a shift click and another shift click to add our two points. The first point we're going to set to zero, zero. And our second point we're going to set to 1, 1. And we want to make sure we change the length of our timeline to be 1 as well, so it keeps it nice and tight like that. So compile that, go back to the event graph, and our position pin is now staying here on the timeline node. So now what I want to do is I want to move the cube. Now what's important when you do a door with a timeline movement is ideally you want the location or rotation, whatever way you're doing it, to be set to zero, zero, zero. Um, this makes it a lot easier to do the calculations. So for the cube, it is set to zero, zero, zero. So we're going to do set relative location. <laughs> Plug it into update. And then the position here, we're going to multiply it with the vector. And the vector I want to, is which direction I want to move it in. So so I want it to go in the y-axis this way. So we're going to move it in the y. And we'll do it by, uh, let's do 500. Okay. And I'll do open door. You may as well do closed door while we're here as it is no effort at all. We'll just do closed door. And put that into the reverse pin there. Now, in order for our assets to be able to, uh, sorry, assets, our NPCs to be able to walk through the door, the door will not have, need to be blocking the um, nav mesh. Okay. So select the cube and search for nav. And you'll see in here, you've got can ever affect navigation. Now, with this turned on, it's going to block navigation. So let me show you by putting that into my scene. Like this, you can see how it's cutting out the navigation mesh. Yeah. Uh, whilst I'm here, I might as well scale this correctly. So to scale this, rather than scaling the whole actor, I'm just going to go to the cube component and scale this. 
on its own. So I'm just gonna do that. Oh. Okay. Um so obviously we don't need it to, we don't want it to block this because of its obstacles, it will make it so that they can't get from the back here to the front. So in order for that to happen, we need to maybe change the nav mesh or give it an obstacle uh, dynamic uh, modifier. So I'm going to go turn can ever affect navigation off in this case. And you can see now the navigation mesh goes through it. So when they spawn in, they can run through the door. Okay. Or they can see that the path through the door is visible. They can't actually run through the door, but um, they should be able to get through it that way. Okay. Okay, so that's that part. Next is getting them to actually spawn in and open in this door. So I'm going to go to my level blueprint. And rather than spawning me on this one here, we're going to tell the door to open. So let's go in and select our door. Right click, create a reference to the BP door. And then from here, we're going to say open door. So that opened the door up. We then want to trigger the spawner to spawn enemies in. So we can click on the spawner here. We select it, go back to level blueprint, create a reference to it. And now I want to spawn multiple enemies in. So I'm going to do two or three. So let's do a four each loop. Or not four each loop, sorry, a four loop. There we are. And it starts at zero. So if I change it to one at the last index, that means it's going to do it twice. Once for zero, a second time for one. And I'm going to take the BP spawner and do spawn enemy. And choose our BP NPC. Compile. So we've got an error, and that's because of this stuff over here. We don't want that. There we go. So when we take out the first stage, the door will open and then spawn enemies in. Those enemies, we actually want them to come straight to us and give them a target to come into the scene. So how do we actually manage to do that? Well, we need to give them a target of where to go to. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a thing on the spawner here to indicate where the spawner should send AI when they come in. Because the spawner will just spawn them in on the spot, which is all right. But you usually want your enemies to run in or do something to come in. And so what I can do here is go edit my spawner and give it a arrow component. And we'll do, we'll call this one the rally point. And I'm using arrow because it makes it a little bit easier for us to visualize where they're going to go and where they're going to come from. So once they spawn in and we add the enemy in here and they spawn default controller, I actually want to make them move to that location. So I'm going to drag out from my return value and do AI move to. And the pawn is actually that pin there. So I'm going to move that down to pawn. Context should disappear when you compile it. There you go. And the move to is going to be the location of our rally point. So let's take out that. Get world location. And put that in there. Okay. Oh, save. Okay. So that'll do that. We then go back to our map here. And I think we're good to go. So we're going to go into the map here and we should see the arrow component. So if I click on the rally point. I can now move this to where I want them to go. So if I put this on the floor here, they should drop down because we've got these nav links we put in in the first episode. They should see that as a, a possible bridge and jump off. So let's see if this works. First of all, let's make sure our combat scenario is set up correctly with a stage. So the first stage is timed for five seconds. Okay. So after five seconds, that door should open. Let's watch it. There we are. And here they come. I don't know why he jumped, but there you go. Then <laughs> and here they are. Okay.
now we've got our AI coming into the room with the door opening. However, let's try and add a little bit more variety to this and have at least one of those AI stay on top of that balcony and shoot us from afar. So let's go through that in the next episode, which you can find over right now on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members for the continued support in the channel. Make sure you subscribed, click the like button, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.